Alex Cohen was slated to be here today. He couldn't make it. He asked me to uh, give this presentation on Enter, the National Training and Education Resource. Uh, it's the infrastructure for next generation learning. Uh, I'm from SRI International. Uh, we're the developers of the Enter platform. Uh, DOE is the uh, sponsoring agency for this effort. So I'll start with, um, that's probably fairly familiar to all of you here, what our current state of education is. I mean, we don't do anything like we did about 20 years ago, yet we're still teaching our kids the same way we did a century ago. Um, the lecture format is seen as largely irrelevant for today's students. I found it interesting in earlier presentation today, uh, talk to students, current college students about uh, e-books and their response was, well, I want to print out all the pages. Um, so you can see uh, basically um, some of the reasons that you know we have some of the highest non-completion rate for students who start a tertiary education program. The issue isn't that we don't know what to do. We actually do know how to train and educate better. Uh, we know that higher levels of interactivity uh, raise student retention. We know that that helps understanding. Um, so the issue is, is actually applying this knowledge into a format to make, uh, to improve overall learning. So, and as we just heard too, I mean, simply putting the same material online doesn't solve the problem. Uh, the current methods to produce online immersive education are expensive. Uh, there's little to no interoperability of online resources. They're costly to maintain and update. Uh, we have platform wars, standards wars, schools have firewalls that prevent uh, content sharing. All of these things uh, are things that we're, we're trying to address with the ITER program. So what is ENTER? Uh, we're a discovery, delivery, and content creation tool for immersive learning that's kick-starting a new ecosystem for education and training. I'll go into a little of the detail of what this is. So some of the issues we're trying to address, uh, first of all, is search. Uh, being able to find out what's out there, not only within your own online resource, but what, uh, in other online resources across the country and even around the world. Once you know what's out there, how can you share and reuse that content? Uh, currently, we're not doing that. We also want to reduce some of the technical problems and end some of the standards for it. You can see how a lot of this comes about. <clears throat> but uh, we always have many competing standards, so the solution is well, we'll have a universal one, and now we basically just added a standard. So our objective with ENTER is to develop the tools for creation and consumption of educational content. The platform is web-based. Uh, it reaches across platforms. It's intended to be easy to use, easy to create, and easy to extend. So specifically what's new is that we have an open source platform for broad acceptance so that it's uh, freely available. Uh, we have a flexible, flexible architecture that I'll show you so we actually have can accommodate single as well as multiple instances that, are, that can be interconnected. Uh, it's open source, so basically you pay as you go for the services you need. If you don't need those extra services or if you have free content, the platform itself is free. Uh, you're free to take the, uh, the instance, set it up yourself, put your own courseware on it. Basically, though, there's a huge potential savings to license costs to the government, institutions, as well as students. Um, <clears throat> we've created the ability to do 3D interactive simulations within the browser, so there's no plug-in or download that's necessary. Whoa. Yeah. How was that done? <laughs> HTML5? Yes, with WebGL. Oh, WebGL, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and to complement that, we have authoring tools for the 3D content. That's an also, also an open source product we call CUDA. Uh, we provide deep search, distributed search and deep content search, so you can search across instances for courseware and content that you wish. Uh, and we're beginning to support mobile applications, so we can do field training or reference in the field on a mobile platform. Uh, to add flexibility to the content, uh, we are starting to integrate with game engines, 
so that you actually can have a game engine as the source of your educational content, and then we pull in the results so we can track student progress within the platform. We're also supporting open standards and want to create a community of interest for further platform development. So essentially we have a community of developers working together with common open standards to further the platform development. So, so what kind of game engines? Uh, right now we have the Vicious game engine was integrated initially. Vicious? Uh, vicious, yes. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> Not open source, it's proprietary, no. but uh, it's one of our partner agencies uh, creating content for the platform right now. And we've also added social media tools so we can, uh, users can rate courses, students can rate courses. We also have uh, a rating system so the subject matter experts, we have knowledgeable raters for individual courses. So what does it do? We, are, we have a group of users right now. Uh, the initial instance would be hosted at the Department of Energy. They're looking for some online courseware. They go to the DOE Enter site. Uh, we're currently integrated with both Ilias and Moodle as learning management systems. They find the course content within those. They take the online course. It reports out their progress. Um, fairly standard kind of uh, environment that we have now. But what's unique is that we can actually replicate this across other organizations. Other organizations can take uh, copies of the inner platform integrated in with other learning management systems, and this shows uh, Blackboard. Uh, that isn't integrated as of yet, um, but that's certainly a possibility as we have another user looking at Sakai right now. Uh, so you could have multiple instances looking for their individual courseware. So again, that's not terribly new right now. What is, though, is through a registry, you can actually find courseware at alternative instances. And so if you're at DOE and, you find, and you're interested in a course that perhaps is offered at UMass Dartmouth, you get onto your DOE site, search for that course, you find it at UMass, you take the course there, the results are reported back to your local instance and vice versa. As I mentioned, we also have an authoring tool <clears throat> for 3D content creation. And what this is, it's intended uh, to be able to import mod 3D models and with the expertise that we would expect an average high school teacher to have in dealing with computer interfaces, they could actually animate the 3D tools and make them interactive within the browser so that you could import a 3D model. In this case, it's of a house. And have doors open, windows open, open, close vents, all the sorts of things you might do in that house, <clears throat> export it into our learning management system, and the student could interact with that directly. We're also adding performance-based assessment uh, within the 3D environment. So while we also support fairly traditional bubble-type tests within a learning management system, all of those resorts, uh, results are recorded reported out, uh, we have a 3D uh, performance-based assessment capability. So for example, one of our courses, we started actually supporting the weatherization assistance program, uh, training workers to weatherize houses, and one of the courses we have is a practice test to do a pressurization uh, test on the house. And so the student is given a house model, uh, re realistic 3D model of a house, and is basically told to prepare this house for a weatherization test. And what they have to do is make sure all the doors and windows are closed, they have to open the vents, uh, turn off combustion appliances, and it's essentially an open-ended problem, uh, unscripted. They can go through any room in whatever order they want, uh, look at <clears throat> the vents, uh, windows, doors, do whatever inter interactions they choose to do based on what their instructions are. When they think they're ready and that the house is ready for the pressurization test, they go ahead and submit their results and based solely on the 3D interaction, the system scores uh, their, uh, their practice test and tells them what sorts of things they want, what things they missed, what vents they didn't open or close or windows or combustion appliances and so forth. So it is truly a 3D based performance assessment uh, all within the browser. 
So we support uh, both traditional and advanced training materials. Uh, so as you see here, we, if uh, your content is in PowerPoint style notes, we actually have a PowerPoint importer. Uh, we have standard uh, bubble type tests, knowledge checks within the learning management system. We also have uh, flash, uh, video, uh, audio. Uh, we're working also with uh, the National Center for Accessible Media to uh, have our platform 508 compliant. And all of those capabilities are built in uh, within the inner platform and uh, the learning management system uh, that we've modified for it. One of the goals of our sponsors is really to make this <clears throat> me, kind of the iTunes of training and education. And so this is a screenshot of just some of the sample courses that are available on our platform right now. Um, so as you see, you can search for individual courses. We have icons there uh, within the current version of the platform. There's also rating systems and number of stars uh, <clears throat> for the course. And the idea is to basically use this as a sort of iTunes site to find courseware of interest, courseware to meet certain requirements for certification or training, take those courses, have the results reported out, um, and, uh, and actually use this as part of a job or a job retraining program so that people can be qualified uh, for some of the, for initially weatherization jobs, but any sort of middle skill type jobs. We started in, uh, <clears throat> we actually started developing this in December of 2009, and as a result of the work we've already done, we've gotten quite a bit of attention. Uh, starting with April of this year, um, <clears throat> the platform was announced by the Deputy Secretary of Energy, Daniel Poneman, at a uh, White House forum on transforming federal IT management. Uh, the following month, we were incorporated into uh, DOE's uh, strategic plan. Uh, our primary sponsor, Michelle Fox, uh, was awarded a Service to the Citizen Award by the Association of Federal Information Resources Management. Um, <clears throat> followed then by June, uh, we were included in President Obama's Advanced Manufacturing Initiative announcement at Carnegie Mellon, in which uh, Enter is mentioned uh, for using, for use in uh, training the next generation of manufacturing workers. And as a result, <clears throat> we were then endorsed uh, by the Manufacturing Institute to train half a million manufacturing workers by 2016. From that, uh, a number of announcements from Secretary Chu related to the Advanced Manufacturing Initiative uh, and uh, some press coverage of that. And then uh, just a little over a week ago, or I guess almost two weeks now, uh, Michelle was awarded the Innovation Gold Medal in Division I uh, from the Fall Chief Learning Officer Symposium uh, for the work that we've done on Enter. So we're getting quite a bit of attention. Uh, I can tell you our, our uh, last prototype release was in uh, September. We're looking for our next major one in March. And as I say, uh, shortly this will be actually released open source and the 3D authoring tool is out on the Google uh, open source site. So actually I'm running a little ahead, but uh, any questions? Uh, there's uh, contact information for Michelle, Alex, and myself. Yes, uh, <laughs> plenty of time for questions. <laughs> that guy is a little bit late, but I was uh, curious. So. The, uh, the courses that are developed to run on the Enter platform, are they interoperable to any other platforms or are they tightly coupled to the Enter platform only? Um, no, they're actually fairly interoperable. Uh, we started uh, with ILIAS as our learning management system, so all of the materials are actually SCORM compliant, uh, and that was intentional to support reuse. Um, <clears throat> and we also have a PowerPoint import capability within the platform. So. If you have PowerPoint style notes, we can import them that way. Uh, based on you know, uh, compatibility with other platforms, I guess, would be the issue between Ilias uh, and the support Moodle. Um, and I, I'm not terribly familiar with what interop interoperability issues are with Sakai and others. So, so that, that's open source, the, the platform itself? The platform itself is open source, yes. Yes. 
how, how would you uh, envision individual institutions utilizing this, this system for instruction at a, an individual college, for example? Well, we're actually starting that right now with some community colleges. Um, and uh, the initial model was that the, the college would set up their own instance on a server. It would be open to their own students. Uh, they would choose themselves whether or not to connect in to kind of the inner ecosystem and share content with other colleges and, and get content from other colleges. That would be up to them. Um, we also, though, are supporting uh, actually our initial prototype instances in the Amazon EC2 cloud. And so one of the community college systems we're working with now is very interested in actually starting their instance in the cloud so they don't have to worry about the local IT support. And so they would have their own uh, identified instance within the cloud accessible to their students. And again, they could decide whether or not they want to enter the, ecos the inter ecosystem and share content with others. So it would really be their choice. Thank you. Yes. Source code languages? Uh, Java. It's written in Java? Yeah, PHP and Java is what we're basing on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Thank you very much.